Good morning. Today is Tuesday, September 11th, and today I'm going to talk to you about ways that we can be our best humans in September now that the days are starting to get shorter and we are headed into the long winter. So, um, my anniversary is on the fall equinox, and that uh, the 23rd of September marks when the days will officially be shorter than nights, at least up here in the northern hemisphere. And from where I am, uh, in the Eugene, Oregon region, uh, that latitude, um, we're just below the 45th parallel, and so it's not quite as bad as it was when I was living up in Portland, Vancouver area, um, but it's pretty significant, and a lot of people uh, here are affected by seasonal affective disorder, um, myself included, and I have had varying degrees of that over the years. Um, not, I think there's a misconception that seasonal affective disorder only affects your mood. Um, it dramatically affects your level of energy, uh, your concentration, and for myself personally, I have uh, more pronounced autoimmune issues during the fall and winter months. And so today I wanted to talk about a few things that I'm going to be doing this uh, upcoming fall in order to mitigate problems as, the, as we get deeper into the winter. So the first one is keeping a regular sleep schedule. And I've been doing better about this recently. My fiance has a regular job now where he wakes up first thing in the morning. Um, but the biggest trick that I have found that I'd like to share with you guys is a website called Sleep Sleepy Time. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description. Um, but it's just a very simple little website, and it's basically a calculator that explains that each of your sleep cycles are, a, the typical human sleep cycle is about an hour and a half long, and it takes about 14 minutes to get to sleep. And so based on that, you can either tell them, okay, I'd like to go to sleep now, when should I wake up? Or you can tell them in the reverse, what time do you want to wake up? And then it will tell you some good times for you to be falling asleep. And this has changed my entire morning because I used to just think, you know, sometimes you get up and you're just on top of things. And then sometimes you get up and it takes you an hour to remember what, like where your pants are. Um, but actually what I've realized the difference is, is sometimes you wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle and it takes your body almost, from what I've found, it's almost the rest of the duration that you would have slept through that next sleep cycle before your body is really like ready to go. And more importantly, even maybe it's just, you're mentally ready to go. And waking up in between those sleep cycles actually allows you, even if you're tired, even if you only got a couple sleep cycles in, um, to be way more on top of things, you're mentally prepared to be awake. Um, and so that big difference. So the second thing is that I'm going to be trying out, I'm going to be testing some different things and I will go through them with you as the season goes on, but I'd really like to try out some different, uh, light spectrum, uh, light therapies. Um, there's one I'm going to get from my local, uh, health food store that's just like their 1,100 watt bulbs that are supposed to be full spectrum. Um, and I've been doing research on seasonal affective disorder, and so I know that there's very little research to back up the LED full spectrum lights, um, or these super high watt light bulbs. But what I would like to see is maybe I'm not getting what I need in terms of the blue light or the, the full spectrum light hitting, you know, the back of my retina, but is it going to just improve my mood having brighter lights in my home? 
in, in my home in particular, and maybe if you live in an apartment, you can relate to not having very many windows or having awkwardly placed windows. We only have one window on the west side of our house, the east side of our house, and then we have windows on like the back side of our house. But because we live in townhomes, the townhouses, we don't have any windows on the sides of our of our home. So it's very hard to get light in the house. It gets a little easier when the leaves fall off the trees. I feel like we actually get a little bit more light, which is nice uh, for those long evenings and the short days to take advantage of that. Uh, but I think that having brighter lights in the home might have a, a positive effect on my mood. Um, and we'll see how it works. Number three is the Norwegian uh, Danish tradition of huga. It's H-Y-G-G-E if you want to look it up. Um, there was a very popular book that came out about this a few years ago. But the idea is creating a, just a cozy environment that helps foster a sense of well-being. If you can imagine those long, long Scandinavian winters, um, it seems like a very important psychological part of the culture to create these warm, inviting um, areas in your home that help create that sense of, of coziness and well-being. And so I'm going to be rearranging the house a little bit um, as we finish up this KonMari project and cr trying to create um, this this sense of, of huga. Uh, last year, I sort of started this. I was introduced to the idea last year. And like I kept up my just one little string of, of warm colored Christmas lights, things like that. And I actually found... Um, I just kept them up through January, and something about having, uh, I was also driving around a lot, uh, doing deliveries, and I noticed a lot of people in this area will leave their Christmas lights up through the time of the year where the nights are, are really long, and, and I mean, we're talking, you know, the sun goes down at four o'clock in the evening, um, and so... I really noticed that there was something about seeing all the little outlines of the houses and the twinkly lights that just made these long... It just would have been so much more depressing to be driving around in the freezing cold through these neighborhoods if it was just dark and there was just the little sad, lonely porch lights. Um, so instead, getting to see these cute... Uh, little gingerbread looking houses all over the place. Um, so those are my three tips for this upcoming fall that you can start on now that we can still take advantage of some of these long days. Uh, get a better sleep schedule under control. Know when you're waking up in between those sleep cycles and get to sleep at the right time for you and your body and your schedule. Um, the second one being incorporating brighter lights into the home. And the third being creating cozy spaces that really bring you a sense of well-being so that while you're spending those longer hours in your home that you really can enjoy that time and just being in a cluttered home is not going to be making you more depressed uh, or more lethargic. So good luck with the winter season. I hope that you're all enjoying September as much as I am. Um, it's really, I think at 27 years old, I just figured out that the only thing I ever had against September is that this is when school starts. And now that I homeschool my kids, I do give them a summer break and we get started again near the end of September. Um, but now it's just exciting now and now there's just like this cool nostalgic we're gonna like hang up leaves and stuff get that huga going and so there'll be some of that in my future videos and just so everyone who has followed my previous videos knows my room is not clean uh, <laughs> I, that, I, I did that video right before my family came to visit and it did make progress and just before everyone showed up I realized I had a lot of things in the rest of the house that just needed to be out of the way and they all ended up in my room. And so I hope I will have a new, 
<laughs> upcoming video about how clean my room is and I'm going to be tackling the rest of this project. I want it out of the way before I start back at school, before my kids are ready to do their future homeschooling and especially that sense of well-being that's going to be really hard if we're just crammed in with a bunch of stuff and it's a lot harder to drag things to the donation center when it's raining outside so gotta get that done. Take care everyone and in the meantime make sure you're out there being your best human. Thanks!